to start, Robert, could you introduce us to the inspiration behind Those Who Walk Away? Yeah, so um, the film was uh, very loosely inspired by the Ursula Le Guin story, uh, Those Who Walk Away from Omelis, which kind of sets a moral paradox of, you know, if you live in utopia, uh, how do you sort of navigate if that utopia is based off of others living in squalor? And, um, and I took that approach kind of looking at this, you know, Weinstein era of, you know, what happens when people know about what's going on, what's their responsibility to have said something prior about, you know, about Weinstein or what they saw or what they knew. Um, and, and also to really kind of look at what it's like um, as in the film, we sort of reference it as, you know, when rot creep kind of touches you, you, you rot from the outside in. And so what's it like to be somebody who's experienced something like this and, um, and sort of live with the headspace of that. Boober, you've done it all throughout your career. What was it about this particular project and character that stood out to you? Um, the project itself stood out immensely because of the, just the initial idea of wanting to make a one take movie. I think that just right off the bat caught my like creative. I was like, well, I would love to try that. Um, so many things. I love the character. I loved what he was going through. I love how it was. I really, really loved how Rob uh, took an idea and just kind of explored it through a genre that that usually is not explored through. Um, it's not so direct, but it is extremely direct. I, I don't know how to, it's, it's very interesting how you take one subject and just put it in a different setting and explain it through someone else's eyes in that way. I, I thought that was really interesting, really interesting. I really love that. Um, and I just love the creative freedom we had or we could have in making this film. I thought um, it was just gonna be a crazy ride to make. And I, I really like when I, now when I read a script, I always think about, okay, am I gonna wanna do this every day for the next like part of my life? Is this something that's gonna excite me? Uh, is it someone I want to play and someone I want to dive into like as character wise, like really discover and take time to learn about and to build? Um, is it a set I'm gonna be, you know, feel like fulfilled on? and it was just answering all those questions and it, they were all yeses. And like, it was, I feel like we, I don't know, all of that made me want to do it. So a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, great answer. And Robert, these characters go on an emotional roller coaster throughout the film. What was the casting process like finding the actors who would be able to tackle such a wide range of emotions? Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing was, is I was very upfront about what we were asking from them. And, um, and I didn't make any indication that this would be easy and that this, you know, e even, I, I mean, there's different ideas of fun, you know, for me, I, this is all fun. <laughs> different for, ideas of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for Boo Boo, it was, it, was, it was fun, you know, but I really just knew that I needed to find people that I could really trust, really depend on. It's a different thing as a filmmaker to not have any takes to not have any cutaways. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's very prominent films and it's like, well, you know, we had to cut around because of this actor, that actor. Like you don't you don't have that when you do a one shot film. And um, and so I just really knew that I needed to, you know, find people that I trust, that I really respected their body of work and really respected them and their work ethic. Um, so that was finding Boo Boo, you know, that was um, working with his, his dad Nils, um, you know, very quickly Bryce and uh, uh, John Steele, um, you know, for the younger, younger kid, um, Grant Morningstar, you know, as the, the yeah. brother, um, and Scarlett, whom I had worked with prior and, um, and, and you know, knew and, um, but yeah, it was a series of conversations where I was, I, I really started off the meetings, like, I'm going to try and talk you out of this. And if I, if you're still on board, then all right, we're, we're at a good place. And Booba, this is a, a much darker and grittier role than fans have come to expect from you. Did that change the preparation? And how did you get into this character's mindset, particularly towards the end of, of the film when everything is amplified? Yeah, it's, it's so hard to explain. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I always, like I was saying earlier, I always start every project feeling a certain certain amount of like, I don't really know how I'm going to do it. And I think that's, I look at every project like that, just from that base level of like, I don't really know. And I think that fear of not knowing pushes me to do a lot of research and it pushes me to do a lot of uh, 
just discovering of who the person is. And that's kind of where I start every, every character is really just trying to figure out, okay, so here's this part of his life. Here we are here. But what over here made it made him go here? Yeah, you know, I just what little bits created this that we're getting a glimpse of as like the viewers. So I just try to like backtrack. And that's that's really what I do is I, I just backtrack and I just uh, I just try to figure everything out. I'm like a little detective. You know, I always get a I get a notebook and I just start writing. Um, for this one, I was doing a lot of just a lot of writing, uh, a lot of just figuring a lot of talking with Rob and like what different things meant. Uh, but he gave me a lot of freedom to just like really uh, explore myself. And, you know, gosh, it's so hard to especially for the later scenes. I it was such a whirlwind. It's hard to pinpoint like this is what I did for that. Uh, for me, uh, you know, actually, one thing I did that I had never done before was I just looked up like the scariest sounds that I could find uh, online. And so I'd have headphones in and um, I would listen to those sounds before the take. And it would kind of put me in this place of like, uh, I would just let it kind of just go all in my body. Um, it was a lot of that. It was, I think it was more like feelings that I was just kind of conjuring up or just letting take over rather than thinking, how do I get to that point? Uh, it was, a, I think it was a lot of just like being really in touch with how I was feeling and um, letting the set kind of take over also. And one great thing, like I, I love on a set when you you walk on set and everyone's very respect respectful of each other. And I felt that that was a, a big thing that was happening on our set. Like when it came down to like those later scenes, everyone gave gave the floor to the actors and to Rob. And I thought that that was really, really kind of everybody. And it, it allows me to just like, I need to be like immersed in yeah. what's happening. And so the fact that we had a set that looked like them, it was literally, we they built it. Like, uh, sorry, they didn't build the house. The house is there, but they built it, the inside. And so being able just to be in the place, I rely a lot on that. Being in the place, being present in the place and just letting like the feeling of like the house and the feeling of what we're doing just kind of like take hold and not having any interruptions. And that's kind of how I did it for this movie. Yeah, great answer. And Robert, not only did you write this screenplay, you also directed and produced. Uh, at what point did you realize you were going to wear multiple hats on this project and how, how challenging was that? So we shot this during the pandemic and, you know, there's just so much. I remember asking Sam Raimi, I was like, do you, do you see producing and directing as, as, you know, in conflict? And he's like, no, 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 it makes you better director because you know exactly where things where to, to move things. And, and this was such a core piece of that. And then writing it, right, I needed to know how to pull it off. Like I, and we even put, you know, direction in the script itself because it was our roadmap, right? Mm. And so having all three hats was, was really crucial. Um, you know, at a certain point you have to, you know, take off your producing hat and, you know, our producer KT Kent, you know, was really, really valuable for, for, for me to know that it was in trusted hands that I could, you know, take on the, on, on the directing side. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, we took a huge, huge risk on this film. Um, with the investors, <laughs> I had to personally sign that if, you know, COVID became a problem, I'd be personally financially responsible uh, for, oh, wow. for making up any shortfalls. And so, and we also didn't know, you know, if we would actually be able to do it. Um, after the first day, uh, for me, it was, it was always like a done deal. I, I you know, just knew it was going to happen. because so I knew the people, I, I knew the team, you know, and, and I, yeah, knew whatever he was capable of. And the first day was very challenging. It's, it's a lot of moving parts and that's just the first three minutes. Right. And then we have another 15 that we have for that particular take. And, um, and it wasn't until I think like much later that everybody was like, yeah, we didn't think, we didn't think we would make the first day. We didn't think it was possible. I was like, what are you talking about? Of course, we're like, I never doubted it, you know, but I think that sort of charge and, and knowing that, um, yeah, having a hand in writing and, and, um, uh, and, and directing and, and, and producing really just kind of gave that confidence that I just knew exactly where we were at every step of the way. And I think that confidence sort of, you know, spilled over to everybody else to say like, yeah, yeah, we can do this. We can indeed pull this off. Yeah. There I mean, was one, 
there was one day when we had we literally had one take to get the longest shot of the movie <laughs> right is it was yeah, that the long yeah. it was the longest we were doing this like and even in the movie it's shorter than it was because of uh an effect that is put in the film uh so in real time this the the shot was even long like twice as long yeah and we had one take <laughs> and uh i remember rob gathers all of us the crew was very small like uh, maybe because of COVID and budgetary reasons, and but honestly, because of the small crew, it became just this great family. And so he gathers all like 15 of us there, maybe. <laughs> and we're all standing around and uh, Rob's like, okay, guys, uh, so we only have one shot at doing this. <laughs> and so let's do it right. And he just gives us like a little speech. And I remember not even being that nervous because Rob's confidence in that we were going to do it and get it was so strong and everything that we had done beforehand in the preparation uh, was so thought out. And I remember like not even being that nervous for this. The only time we literally had one time to get a huge shot. And uh, yeah, it was a great, great little afternoon. <laughs> and, and even when, you know, we only had one take if we had a like a very you know cushy day, that meant we had two and a half, right? Yeah. So we we also chose to set to shoot like during golden hour, um, and you know the the size of the crew is largely uh, as a result of you see every direction, right? People right. need to be hiding all the time, and so yeah. there's a lot of funny moments, you know, like me and like four other people like hiding behind a car, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you see everything. It needs to be set up as real and such a challenge, you know, for, for lighting. I mean, Diego Cordero you, oh. you know, just pulled off miracles. I mean, just so many interesting new challenges um, in making a film like this that, um, yeah, but, but the, 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 the team exceptionally creative and hardworking and really could not have done it with, with each and every one of them. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about the decision to film this and kind of several continuous takes and, and like kind of creating that atmosphere where it's very high stakes, very eerie? Yeah, it, it start, I see um, one take films as a subgenre into themselves. Um, I think in every filmmaker's body of work, you know, that, that they should make a film like this or, or that it should be, you know, part of their canon. Um, you, you know, so, uh, and we wrote this, you know, just before uh, 1917 came out, but, you know, Sam Mendes' film and, um, and also, you know, going back to Hitchcock with Rope. And so it was really part of the core idea um, that this is all going to be one continuous take. And, um, uh, and, you know, we're just kind of breaking it up in very minor moments. But um, it was very important, too, that when we didn't cut, that the audience knew that we weren't cutting, right, that it, that it, was, it really did feel like one unbroken uh, shot. Um, and we only have like a, a, a you know, a, a handful of, of actual cuts in the final film. I mean, really we're shooting about 15 minutes a day. And Boo Boo, for you as an actor, what challenges and slash freedoms does that give you when you're filming in this kind of particular style? Um, yeah, I mean, ob the obvious challenge is, you know, uh, being where you have to be at a, <laughs> at a certain time, you know, and just all of that. I mean, literally like I was on set last night and we had to do a scene where we just walked like 20 feet and we kept missing our marks. So it's like, you know, we're like, oh, and then I, I think about what we did and it's like, we literally were walking through an entire town, <laughs> like going and had to, oh my God. So the first, <laughs> I mean, so this is one of the challenges. First day, I'm so nervous. I'm like, oh my God. But it, thank God my character in the first part of the film is supposed to be nervous. So <laughs> just using every little bit, you know? Uh, we do this whole walk through um, an entire town and we, I have a monologue at the end of, <laughs> of you know, our walk essentially. And I have to hit the exact mark at the end of this monologue and so there's just a lot of challenges of like being in the moment and but also knowing that you have to be a certain somewhere at an exact time 
for the move for the rest of the film to work <laughs> you know not just that part but the whole movie <laughs> and um so it, that, those were challenges you know like there was oh gosh during one t- <laughs> this is an absurd one this is probably my favorite moment because <laughs> it was so absurd where uh scarlet and i we have it was the beginning part of that really long take that we had one shot of uh we're driving in a car but literally we drove across from like town to another town like it wasn't like a it's like a 30 minute drive. minute drive yeah 30 minute drive in this yeah. car and, and it was super important that we kept it all as one shot because i was trying to be well because i was being such a purist about it exactly. so literally in we shot on a red camera literally in the camera diego would switch it to high frame rate so then we were shooting like once every you know minute one frame every minute and so that's what had that accelerated, but it, it would naturally go into it. Cause he was, he was doing it. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs> and so we we get in the car and right before that, we're, we're literally mid dialogue saying all the dialogue, doing the whole thing. We realized both Scarlett and I realized <laughs> that neither one of us put the address in a GPS. So we didn't know where we were going. <laughs> <laughs> This is mid dialogue. We're saying the words like that aren't the words saying you don't know where we're going. She's supposed <laughs> to know where she's going because <laughs> she's taking me to this house. And I, for some reason, I, I think I, maybe I was supposed to, I forget. And I had my phone or my phone was sitting in the, yeah, we're supposed to use my phone for the GPS just sitting in the, in the car. And so I grabbed the phone. I'm saying my dialogue to her <laughs> while Next to my leg, where I think the camera won't be able to see it, I'm putting in, I'm finding the address. <laughs> and then midline, I literally am sliding my phone underneath my legs because I don't want the light to shine into the camera <laughs> because it'll, I'm not supposed to be doing this in the scene, you know? And I'm sliding and they slide it onto the, to the console so she can see the GPS. It was the most, str- in my mind, I was like, Please, God, wow, they're not to be this weird orb floating at the bottom of the, of the camera. And I'm, this is like mid dialogue of like full on conversation. So that's the kind of rapport we all had with each yeah. other. Was it became this in before we made the movie, we had done so much rehearsing that it really was. I don't want to say like second nature because there was a lot of things that happened that weren't expected. And there was a lot of because we did that there was so much freedom for the spontaneous little things that would happen in the scene um that we could do things like that and without if we hadn't done so much if rob hadn't been like we're drilling this uh things like that wouldn't work because i would have been like oh guys we forgot the address you know (laughs) like we have to start over (laughs) and then i would have ruined it (laughs) Yeah, Booby, your, your dad is also a part of this project. How did that come to fruition and how special was it to get to share this moment with him? Oh, it was great. He's the reason why I uh, got the script. You know, uh, Rob had reached out to him, I believe, to stunt coordinate the movie and to play Rock Creep. And my dad probably brought us uh, me up. I, I don't know, or I forget how it all really went down. But um, yeah, it was... It was great being able to share it with him. The subtleties he does behind the mask. And that's hard, you know, you know when you can't, you know, do it with your face. Uh, so he's the subtleties he does with the character. And it really, really was great. It was fantastic. Um, I was a little nervous at first because, uh, you know, working with families, it's amazing. But at the same time, it's kind of hard to separate the fact that he's my dad (laughs) you know know, in a scene but we did and it was uh it was really fantastic we both were in good head spaces and then final question for for the two of you this film has made its way around the festival circuit it's been incredibly well received what do you think is resonating most with audiences and what do you hope they take away um you know i i I think the film is very different and that was very intentional. You know, in fact, Boo and I in the beginning, you know, mainly Boo were like, let's try and make something that's not a horror film that is a horror film, right? So there's no jump scares in the film. In fact, like this was our own inside joke of that, like 
the camera is behind Boo Boo when he jumps out and scares Scarlet. Yeah. No, like that's that's to the degree that we were like, let's just let's just not full horror. Like let's really make something different in every way and every detail. And I think that is is what resonates. You know, there's so many horror films out there. There's so much going on, so much content that I mean, I've seen a crazy amount of films and, you know, I sit back and look at what we were able to pull off and I'm like, I haven't seen something like this before. So I think that really fires up audiences. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree 100% with Rob. I, uh, there's so many layers to our film that can be dissected. And uh, I just hope that I hope that when people are watching this movie, like they they lean over to somebody afterwards and like, oh, did you get that part? And they're like, what? No, I. What about this part? And they're like, oh, I didn't even see that. Like, I hope that's the kind of vibe, honestly, because like emotionally and just aesthetically and just yeah. enjoying yourself, but also like on a deeper level too. There's a many, many, many layers throughout our uh, even filming. We were discovering things, and I've taken like that lesson from Rob is so um, like fluid in how he works, but also knows where it needs to go. And for me creatively in other realms, I have been, uh, def- I've taken that from Rob. I've like learned and not taking it away from Rob, but taking some <laughs> and sprinkling it on me when I can. Cause I really love that uh, way to work. It allows everybody to bring their best and uh, to feel like their involvement really does make a difference and it does. And Rob shows that in working that way. Yeah, it, it, it's hugely the case and the film could not have been as, as good and wild and <laughs> intense uh, without, without, you know, really it was a full collaboration yeah. with Boo Boo. And um, yeah, and we're even collaborating on a, a, a new script now. Um, and uh, we have a good way of, of pushing each other further, further, <laughs> further. And, uh, <laughs> You have what you have on screen. Yeah.